Hi everyone, in our last lesson, we looked at what are inequalities. And we used some math, uh, ELA type phrases to create math sentences that used either the less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to symbols. Today we're going to talk about checking solutions to see if the statement is true. A solution is a value that you put into the inequality to create a true math statement. So we're going to look at um, the solutions and we're going to talk about whether or not they become true. We're going to use substitution, and when we use substitution, we're going to substitute in a number for a letter, just like we've done before. So we're going to make a chart that looks like this. It says value of x, the um, math sentence that we're going to be working with today is x plus 3 is less than or equal to seven. And then we want to know, is it true? All right, so let's go ahead and put this into action and then you can see how this works. So first we want to look at a value of three. Is three going to make this statement true? So when I put the three in, I am going to put three in for this x right here. So now it will say three in for x plus three is less than or equal to seven. So if I draw my line here, three plus three is six. So is six less than or equal to seven? Six is less than seven, so this is yes. Six is less than seven. That's why it's true. So this inequality is true when we use a value of three. Okay, let's do another one. And this time we're going to use the value four. So we're gonna substitute in the number four and we're gonna see if the inequality is true when we substitute in the number four. So there's my four. Again, I'm gonna put four right in for x. So now it says four plus three is less than seven. Let's check it. Less than or equal to seven. Four plus three is seven. Seven is less than or equal to seven. This is yes, because seven does equal seven. So this would be a solution. So it makes the statement true. That statement is indeed true. Okay, we're gonna look at another example before we do some more um, examples. So right now in our notes, we're just looking to see how to substitute in and to check the solutions. So this time they give us a five. So in for X, I'm gonna put five. I have five plus three is less than or equal to seven. So solving this side first, five plus three is eight. Drop down my symbol. Eight is not less than or equal to seven. So this one is a big no, because eight is greater. It's more than seven. So this one does not work. Okay, so now that you've seen how, how these um, work with substitution, we're gonna do some more examples together where they give us just one number and a different example. 
So hit pause if you want to take some more time to fill out this table of examples. Otherwise, I'm going to push my paper up and we're going to start with example A. All right, example A. It says to tell whether or not it is a solution. So it says x plus 1 is greater than 7 when x equals 8. So wherever I see an x, I am going to put in 8. So here's my x. It's going to become an 8. So this really says 8 plus 1 is greater than 7. If I don't remember how to read these symbols, I can look back in my notes from the previous lesson and I can practice reading it by matching it up. Okay, let's go ahead and check to see if it's a solution. 8 plus 1 is 9 is greater than seven. Nine is greater than seven, so this one is yes. This is true. It is a solution to the inequality. All right, let's do another example, example B. And in this example, it says seven y is less than 27. And then they tell us that y equals 4. y equals 4. So our job is first, we're going to substitute in with this 4 where I see a y. So here's the y. So this is like saying 7 times 4 is less than 27. Okay, well, seven times four is 28. So 28 is not less than 27. So this is no, not a solution. It did not make this inequality true. 28 is not less than 27. So this one is no. And we just put a little slash through the inequality signs so that you can tell them that, no, it doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to flip the page now. We'll do one more example, and then I'm going to give you your triads for today. Okay, on example C, example C says that 5 is less than or equal to Z divided by 3 when z equals 15. So z equals 15. So we're going to start out first by taking this 15 and we're going to put it right in for z. So this now says 15 divided by 3. So 5 is greater than 15 divided by 3. So let's go ahead and draw our balance line. We're going to solve over here first. 15 divided by 3 is 5. Now we're going to read this. 5 is greater than or equal to 5. This one is yes. It checks out because 5 is equal to 5. So this one would work. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and do our triads for today. Um, so go ahead and um, get ready to write those down, and then we're going to solve those. So let's do some triads. All right, triad number one says that B plus 4 is less than 6 when b equals 3. So b equals 3. This is a semicolon. Sorry, it got crazy. Um, all right, and number two that we're going to do that you can't see, let me push this up, says 10 
is less than or equal to 18 divided by x. And again, x equals 3. So go ahead and solve these problems. When you are hit pause, when you're ready, come on back and hit play and check your level of understanding and see where we're at. All right, so the first one, b is 3, so where I see b, I'm going to put a 3. 3 plus 4 is less than 6. Let's check it. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 is less than 6. This is no, this one's not true. Seven is more than six. So this one doesn't work because seven is more than six. Okay, on my last problem here, it says x equals three. So where I see x, I'm gonna put a three. So this says 18 divided by 3. 18 divided by 3 is 6. So now I'm ready to drop down the rest of this problem and let's read it. 10 is less than or equal to 6. 10 is definitely not less than, so this does not work, than 6. So this one is also no, 10 is bigger. than six. So all you're doing is you're just taking the number, substitute it in for the letter, just like we've done before, read through the sentence, and if it's true, then yes, it's a solution. If it's not true, it's not a solution. So go ahead and answer your essential question. How do we check for solutions? And then write your level of understanding out to the side where are you at. Then when you are ready, you can either come on back to the Google Meet and ask for help if you need it, or you can go and do your practice work. As always, I appreciate all of your hard work and effort, and make it a great day.